It's time, ladies and gentlemen, to find out who is going to walk away as the champion of the StarCraft II World Championship Series Challenger Europe Edition Grand Finals. My name is Nathan Fabricant. I am joined by Paolo Vizcarra mm. to guide you home to the end of our very, very long European broadcast. But it's not about how long it took or where we end up. It's about the friends we made along the way, Paolo. Yes. It's, yeah. And I can't wait to be friends with all of you joining hands as we witness these two titans of competitive e-gaming go up against each other in what will surely be the cage match of a century. It should be. I mean, these two have been rivals for the last uh, year or so. Each other's kryptonites to a good degree. Yeah. Most people would have put them as, as the favorites to be here. And uh, most people might still predict Serral, but it's actually Raynor that's gotten the best of him in... Uh, I would say recent history as far as like this year's circuit. Oh, we shall see. It's been an exciting year of StarCraft and everybody, I would say most everybody, I'm going to I'm going to speak for everybody. It's because of these guys. <laughs> People have been really hyped over these two, all right? Yes. Um not your not your choke artists like Innovation or Maru. In the top left, we've got the red Zerg player. He is Reynard. And the best player in the world, by most people's standards, on the bottom right hand side, it is playing for Ense Serral. Will it be easy for Ense? But never a GSL. <laughs> never a GSL. So I would say these two probably. I would say if most people had to rate the top three Zergs. These two would make the list on most people's yeah. lists. I mean, it's these two and Dark, right? Like, I feel like Sue is a little bit under at this point. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's there is some other drama, though. Okay. We do have a fast pool. Mm, very. If you want to if you want to break it down for me from Sarah's side, I do have stuff I can waste time with, but you might be able to speak on this. Yeah, so this is going to be a fast pool. Uh, I believe that was a 13-12, so it's going to be a very aggressive pool with a very fast baneling nest. Uh, follow up. He's going to be delaying the queen. It's one of two things that you can do. You could get the queen and uh, get faster reinforcements or get the faster banelings. In any case, from Raynor's perspective, he's not really going to know what's going on. This could be a 12 pool. It's very similarly timed as far as the first few links. So Searle's going to look to apply pressure onto the hatchery and kind of almost hope that Raynor pulls some drones to account for this. Mm -hmm. Searle's not, however, looking for this hatchery. He's looking for a kill move right here as he is very, he's very much committed to it. He's going for a kill move. He's going for a kill move. Coming he's in going for, yeah, it's, yeah, he's going for it fast. About I mean, Raynor will pull drones almost certainly. It's a matter of how many and what his reaction is moving forward. Uh, now, to Raynor's credit, I believe yeah, he's not no longer mining gas, and this is very important. You need all the minerals that you can get because gas is not going to come in, into play for defense here. And you can see how fast these banelings are for, oh, for Serral. It all comes down to this. If those banelings hit the drones, it's all ogre. Yep. Oop. Oh. He's waiting for it. He wants to use them as cover. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> this is kind of mocas. Yeah, I, I got to say, I didn't like that so much. Um, but but it ends up working really well for Serral because the thing is usually you want to detonate those links or, or those main links onto the links. But it, I mean Serral has just I think won this game right like it's yeah. seven workers left over for Raynor. Uh, Serral was looking to keep those main links as, as long as possible, and it Wait. ends up be, it ends up being so that Raynor trades links for links. But he killed so many drones, he knocked them back to Wings of Liberty, Paolo. Yeah, he sure did. And Serral behind this has already taken a hatchery and expanded. So this is very unusual because this usually has a very fast uh, speed link follow up, and instead of going for the speed links, he went for an incredibly fast bailing nest and went for this uh, advantage whilst expanding. So this is kind of a hybrid build that you don't see very often. Um, out of the hat it, from uh, Cyril here. This looks pretty impossible for Rainer, though, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, if, if he comes back and wins this, everyone should be like, hot damn, at least. Yeah, there's yeah, there's pretty much no chance. I mean, the thing is, Rainer has to stay in it because had Cyril committed a little bit more, like most openers with 13 pool, uh, with 13 12, for example, like most of the time what you're going to see is no expansion behind it because it's such a heavy committal to the gas. Right. But what Serral did here was he just mined enough gas for a baneling nest, for two banelings, and he just had those initial 10 links, plus the two banes. 
So a very difficult thing to deal with, with no follow-up, but that's what allows him to take this, this very aggressive um, hatchery otherwise. Now, had Raynor held and, say, gone for link speed, he would have won this game very easily, but it ends up not being the case for him, and as it stands, he has a very, very slim chance at, at this game. So I think, what, Cyril just link floods him now and it's over? He doesn't even have Baneling Nest. He's going to try to wall this off? I think he can probably still flood him? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to fully wall off, and he does have two queens, but it's just two queens. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Cyril doesn't actually flood him, because this, this is further investment from Rain, right? Like, all those buildings. Yeah, like, you, you can see and, and think, okay, there's two Evo Chambers, there's a Road Warrant, there's going to be a lot of use out of those. But even if Cyril does no damage here, all these buildings are actually not going to produce anything for a long while, right? He doesn't actually have to sustain, but Cyril's going to break through anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, going on the Queens, okay, I like this a lot. He's like, better. yeah, just take your drones, bruh. GG, Cyril takes game. Numero uno. With a very unique build, not a very not a very standard CVC by any means. Actually, quite uh, quite the build. They're just going for the very fa very fast banelings. Like I said, ideally for Rainer, you don't pull drones, and you just fight links against links. Try to trade almost inefficiently, as weird as it sounds. Like say, like fight four links against six links, so you kill like three or or two and a half, but you don't give the opportunity for a big baneling detonation. Right. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's kind of like measuring how much you you are able to lose. But when you have all of your drones there as a liability for those two Banelings, it becomes incredibly difficult. And that's what we saw here. So beautiful game by Cyril. And I can understand now why he was looking to go for the drones. It was because there was no aggressive follow-up, in which case you would want to go for the links to end the game. No. He, he was just macroing behind it like a god. Now, Paolo, all the Rainer fans in chat, I can I can already hear it in my head, saying that Cyril can't beat him in late game, so he's cheesing him. True or false? I'm not sure, quite honestly. Rainer has such an incredible CBC, perhaps, uh, like, from my perspective, one of his best, if not his best matchup. So um, I'm not sure that it's true or false either way, but, but who is favored is very much up in the air. I completely agree with you. That was kind of, I was just throwing that out there at you. I think both of these players are equally scary in all stages of the games. It's kind of why that's why they're good, you know. If they were only, if they only waited for late game, they probably wouldn't probably wouldn't be this far, you know what I mean? Yeah, and they're probably pretty tired too, so I wouldn't be surprised if they throw more curb uh, curb bolts like that. Yeah. Yeah. We started eight and a half hours ago, ladies and gentlemen. Oof. It's been a long day indeed. That that's was actually Cyril's tweet. At the start, and I think like right after that first mech match, and Sarah tweet is like, "It's going to be a long day." <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, all of the, the European players in general, from the start of Wings of Liberty, it's crazy because in Wings of Liberty, you could see like Korean meta and European or, or non-Korean meta in general were very differing in that non-Koreans would always play for the late game. Whereas Koreans would try to win the game as early as possible and as best, like basically base their stuff on execution rather than theory yeah. of what would be best. So it's only when Europeans and, and non Koreans in general started catching up in regards of like getting to the late game safely that we've seen this, this rise of these players. But you know, like it is, it is a trend that has prevailed through time. And now we have the top eight of Europe giving us eight hour days. <laughs> so. To be fair, that really is also a huge, uh, just comes out of the fact that the players, there were a lot of really close back and forth matches too. Yeah. There were, we did not have stomps today, did we? No. Kind of no, close. Been a very close. Yeah. yeah. Even the, even like the, the games, even the matches that didn't go to game five were still very long and close. Yeah. But you think about where the, where the game state is at right now and, and really, Aggression like we saw last game from Cyril, it hasn't been panning out too well for for many players. We don't have the blies of the world here, right? Like it's, no. they're just they're just not making it here. It's the blies, the catses. <laughs> yeah, sure, the catses are far forgotten at this point in terms of That's just because there hasn't been a map of the gold base in a while. <laughs> mm, this is this is fact. Yeah, but man, these players are really, really good at surviving and uh and, you know, as such, we are getting very, very long and exciting games. Indeed, so. we are. Indeed, we are. Yeah, link speed uh, now starting for Cero. 
Mm, and for Rainer, so a little bit behind is Rainer, but not considerably so. Both players have the potential to just be out on the map with their circlings. It is Cyril that's going to be making the two scouting circlings first, whereas Rainer is going to be favoring the slightly faster hatchery. Uh, Cyril trails right behind them, so we see Rainer has an extra drone because Cyril made those links. And uh, it's a little bit of a funny dance. Uh, Rainer does or should see those two links move out. So he should be answering with links of his own or be willing to transfer the queen from the natural to the third, in which case he would probably want to make an extra queen. Both players playing pretty or fairly risky in terms of, of uh, the amounts of units they've produced, but also both players going for a relatively fast bailing nest by keeping two drones each on gas instead of one that we see pretty often that would be more common with you know, with a little bit bigger of a backbone. So now is when both players will also decide what to do with their first la larva inject popping up. And it seems like it's Serral deciding to be aggressive and Raynor deciding to go on the defense. So Raynor is going to be sneaking out more drones. But with Banelings in play, I think that this will favor Raynor a little bit. I think that he's not getting caught off guard. I think that he's not cutting any corners. He's saying, I'm ready for your aggression and Serral is being aggressive. So, so long as he controls properly, uh, he will get ahead economically in this game. He's already four drones ahead. All right. Well, let's see if he can make the defense happen. The Zerglings have arrived at the third base of Rainer and Serral. Oh, look at those sneaky banelings by Serral, though. Going to try and slip a few now. I wonder if he's going to go... Okay, well, he's, he needs to, he's yeah, he aware needs, of this. Oh, yeah. is he, though? A little bit. I mean, I think that Serral needed to continue to poke and apply pressure with those links. Two banelings for two drones, obviously not a great trade. A little bit of mining time lost, but all in all, Actually, the game's gonna kind of even out. Yeah, I, I think he was like, well, I'm gonna lose one of these banelings going up the ramp. So he was like, I don't want, the second one will only just deal damage to the drones and I don't have anything to finish them off. So mm -hmm. calculated decision to take the, you know, it's not the best trade, but it's better than what he would have had if he had tried to get the bigger prize. Yeah, and here's where Raynor is using uh, his earlier four drone advantages in the tech department. Um, he is, however, trailing behind on upgrades. So, you know, there's there's little deviations here and there, but for the most part, there's nothing that either player is going to be able to exploit because by the time they reach over across the map, they're going to be all caught up on on any front. Yeah, who can Cyril. out more is the question. Cyril getting his plus one ranged attack a little bit faster. So he uh, blocks off the scout there. The lair timings with the Roach Warrens. It's, nah, it's pretty similar, right, between the two of them. Like, it's a little bit faster for Rainer, but... Yeah, I mean... That plus one difference, like, he would wait for that anyway, right, probably? Yeah, so Rainer's going to be looking for a potential, um, like, um, plus one attack timing, should he have the opening, whereas Cyril is probably looking for a 2-1 or a plus two. Uh, timing because he's gonna have the range but not the speed and without speed you really don't want to move out because if your opponent just happens to have more roaches with speed you lose yeah exactly so uh instead Terrell might might try to make some of these uh dropper lords with his uh, overlord speed that he's going for and that could be a way to not really care about speed and still apply some pressure with his earlier upgrade but i'm very surprised there's the plus two okay yep not so the links come up to poke that second evolution chamber for Carapace that you were talking about starts boo non up. Yeah. I'm so glad. You know what? I'm what? glad we have you here, cats. Thank you. You we finally have someone at WCS who can talk about ZBZ. Oh, I love ZBZ. We, we honestly really needed it. I love it. So we've got the roaches starting to come out. And I guess what are we gonna we gonna become the Roach Wars for a little while? He, there's that dropper lord that you were talking about. Yeah. Plus one carapace. Yeah, so there's the plus one uh, timing for Rainer as well, and a very nice Pyre as well. I like that. Uh, whereas Serral is going to be looking to hold this and then possibly counterattack with his plus, uh, plus two, plus one Carapace. So Serral was getting the plus one attack, but he was never really looking to exploit it. Uh, we'll see what happens here as uh, Rainer is looking to make something happen. Grabs a nice Roach there, and that's the advantage of the speed, right? He's able to reposition quickly, and if he sees an opening, he'll take it. If not, he'll back off. Mm. Okay. Now the Roaches are just kind of posturing outside, looking for an opportunity. But the Watchtower, you're going to see that Drop Overlord. What the? Okay, the Drop Overlord looks freaking sick. With let that me skin. see, let me see. A Weasel, show the Drop Overlord. Look, it's got like all. It's got like. Uh, oh, that's a dropper. Yeah, no, that's like, oh, silly. That's the that's the overseer. 
What? Well, that was a, an overseer, a, a, no. a radar space. Which one do you mean? No, I was looking at the one by that went by the watchtower. Oh, I see. So he's gonna he's gonna drop the main soon. Yeah. So one thing that Raynor did do a very good job of is keeping map control, basically pushing the army of uh, Cyril to the back, and that's going to allow him to go Muta safely. So once Mutas are out, uh, Cyril's essentially going to have to be on the defense. He's going to have to basically retreat with all of the overlords that he has out on the map. He's probably going to lose a few in the process, maybe two or three. And there is going to be a transition, a very fast transition into Hive, actually, from Cyril. Does he think he just wants to use the Vipers to deal with the... Uh, I think he'll, at this point he'll sense? have to once once the meters are out, but he's going to need a little bit bigger of a, of a backbone, perhaps Queens. We've seen Cyril do um, Queens, and he, he's very much a fan of Knight, since we know that much. So Raynor doing a very good job of going after uh, Ravagers, which actually cost exactly the same as a Mutalisk, so they're by no means cheap units. And uh, now going, I identifying that he can kill this board before it's done. That is beautiful. Great denial. Yes, indeed. He's trying to use his Roach Dropper Lord to buy himself time, but... Ooh, the Queens come out. They're going to get caught. This one's Spore Crawler, too. It's not going to be able to reposition in time to do anything. Yeah. And, uh... I mean, Cyril is faster on the tech otherwise. Raynor will gain map control with this. We see the Overlords of uh, Cyril still patrolling, not really being pulled back for the time being. And uh, Raynor now, with his plus two finishing, he's willing to move out with his Roaches. I'm not sure if this is the wisest decision, because Cyril hasn't really committed to a, to a hard transition out of Roaches. So if Cyril was going for something other than Roaches, then, then you could argue, okay, like, your Roach supply is going to be considerably faster, maybe I'll catch you transitioning. And there is some Hydras, but uh, that might actually be just better for Cyril, even if there's no uh, not a Ravager backbone for Raynor to counteract, so... This is looking decent for Cyril. I mean, yes, there's Mutas out. Yes, Raynor has map control, but he controls them. He controls a map with even economy essentially. So he's not really gaining anything from his map control. Other than now the Hydras being in this army are going oh, nice. to allow fully back those Roaches. However, diving on top of that center base. Okay, nice pickoff here for very, Raynor. Very nice. Yeah. Also identifying on the side where he can take fights. Got to be careful with those Hydras. The Mutas are very expensive. So, um, yeah, but uh, all in all, Cyril's position is not bad by any means. I mean, he has taken advantages in that, yeah, exactly, a Weasel, in, that, uh, in, in those upgrades. And now catching uh, some Ravagers morphing. Oh, that's huge. Denies a lot of the Ravagers. The Roaches were able to get right on top of them. Does go for a little bit of a flank, but the Hydras Cyril. are alive, and the rest of the Roaches are going to come in. 34 Roaches being made by Raynor to try and swing the tide back. The yes, other way. Indeed. And now Cyril is choosing a choke, and that's very important because of the, his his army composition, right? Like, Roaches want to fight out in the open, but when you have more ranged units in the back, then you, your damage output potential is much greater, and Raynor should not be fighting here, I don't think. Uh, but he kind of finds an open space. Additional Roaches are arriving. Raynor would love to have some more Ravagers. He's going to bile down those Ooh, Ravagers. Nice. Really nice play. Furrow to uh, heal up. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of sounds funny, but I mean, you could also throw the Biles onto the Burrow of Roaches there, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, he did Burrow them right after the Biles, so... And well timed, well timed. Yeah, indeed. But still, Cyril, Cyril is gonna gain a great position here, even the, before the plus three kicks in. And Raynor is, is just has no business defending. He's basically just pushing in so that he can escort the drones back. And he will accomplish that much. Not identifying that he could have maybe threaten those uh, reinforce reinforcements. Cyril is tired of people uh, talking about him having a rival, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, at the same time, Raynor did expand, and Cyril's fourth is equally late, so supplies are pretty even. It's just an uh, upgrade advantage for Cyril that's, uh, that's, the, that's the nice thing to have here. Not a lot of gas for Raynor either, so he needs to find these open engagements where the range of Cyril is not going to come uh, into play as hard or engagements like this under um, under or down the ramp right like where he can actually spread and have a bigger concave with Cyril pushing into it yeah. does he have enough though I don't think so gets past the piles and those hydras that you were talking about able to shoot for extended periods of time are going to do fantastic amounts of damage Cyril taking a 40 supply lead 
Those Roaches and Ravagers forced up the ramp, and that, that choke point goes the other way, too. It's not going to be super fun. Yeah, that's pretty much just going to be game. GG. Zero goes up 2-0. Two, two, yeah, a very clean, very impressive game by him. I mean, Raynor did very nice things, too. He was consistent with his strategy, right? Like, he was going for the road speed, moved out when he had the road speed and the plus one, it synced up. And then behind that, he went for Muta, so he wasn't falling behind on every regard. He was taking some advantages here and there. The Muta's accomplished something in terms of map control. Doesn't really go after the Overlords, which I would have liked to see, right? A lot of Overlords were just floating. He was looking yeah. for, for bigger damage than that. And... Uh, yeah, Serral making Hydras and capitalizing of positioning from there. So As soon as he got the Hydras, everything just swung the other way so fast. And you mm -hmm. talked about those upgrades. And speaking of Hydralisks, would you like your Hydras to be that <laughs> cute? Have you ever wanted to put the control terminal of an RC remote car into a Hydralisk? Well, now you can with the new War Chest available today in the Collections tab in StarCraft 2. Get yourself a beautiful young Ultralisk like this to lead your army into battle. <laughs> Don't worry, they're just as mindless with remote controls as they are under the guiding of a hive mind. So, with that being said, getting ready to go into game number three, which is going to be on Sandabad. And I also just want to remind you all again, because might as well just get through all of this a billion times since it's the finals, but there is a free tier to the war chest this time around. So if you're like, Nate, I'm saving us money, I'm waiting to get paid. Well, first of all, your experience will transfer over from that free tier mm. so if you like level it all the way up and you're like you know what finally got myself the 25 bucks i want to get all three of the bundle you can do that and you'll have everything unlocked that's pretty um, cool it's so, uh, so it's awesome and okay, you can make a retro retro decision what, yeah what's the word retro retroactive, retroactive yeah yes yeah. so the first phase there's some sprays, I think a portrait, and you can get a classic marine skin, which has the StarCraft remastered portrait in game as well. Like when you look at it, it's really cool. Tragically, it does not come, very tragically, does not come with the very awesome original marine attack sound effect, which would have been so cool if that was in there. That would be really cool. I can indeed. dream. I can dream. As far as classics, though, some would argue this is El Clásico of European StarCraft right now. And for a little while as well, so we'll see. Of ZBZ? No, Rainer Searle, El Clásico. Oh. El Clásico is a thing that every non-American would understand. So that's a reference for all of our viewers who are not in the United States of America. It's okay, I can't read anyway, so I wouldn't understand it if <laughs> I tried to explain it. Hatch first. Yeah, give me that zoom. Hells yeah. Match first on either side. This is a very large map, so we'll see what the players choose to do. Most often we're gonna see link speed on either side, but uh, th on this type of map there's room for a little bit of uh, of crazy should either player go for it. Now Raynor in the past has gone for things like Ling Lurker. If there is a map to pull out links as a core unit, it would be large maps, right? Like the larger the map, the more gain you get from your faster units. All right, Cats, can I ask you a personal question? Yes, sir. Have you ever tried to wall the natural on this map in ZVZ and take three bases without link speed? Have you ever tried it? Do you th have you ever seen anyone that's been so crazy as to try it? I haven't walled off the natural, but I go three hatch gasless on this map sometimes. But do you wall, okay, not necessarily the natural, but that big ramp. Have you tried to wall that big ramp out of that? Uh, I usually, when I go gasless, I usually make a, a spine and a creep tumor first off of my natural. Walling it off, yes, but you can't do it right away. Of course. Like if you, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I meant, ah, oh, that's just the idea of it. It just sounds so insanely greedy, and I love it. It is very, very greedy. It's kind of punishable by um, anything. Nidus. Ah, uh, yeah. Nidus mainly, yeah. But you know, if you're if you, if you can catch the Nidus, if you know they're coming, then it's not so bad. If the, your opponent didn't know you were going to do something like that, mm -hmm. they wouldn't just rush a Nidus because it's not that good anymore. Yeah, the thing is, on a map like this, no one's ever going to go for an early pool. Uh, actually, Game Time went for an early pool on this map against me in one of the Challenger qualifiers, and he tried to mine the, the minerals in the middle of the map, which was cute. But even if you do that, it's like slower than most maps. So, and you, and you know, you need to mine the minerals in the middle of the map. So it's just not a thing that you'll see very often. Um, so I like greed on this map. I, I like playing to the map as much as possible with oh, most players. I was very happy when I saw that this map was uh, one of the ones that made it into the new season. Same. It's one of my favorites. It's a good map. Yes, indeed. Both players going for a bit for the Baning Nest. 
and both players also going for actually only uh, only Raynor prioritizing the creep spread onto the onto the middle area. Do you think he does something with the Evo chamber? Is he going? Do you think he's going to get like a fast at melee? I would love that. Let's see. I mean, he has to do something with the Evo chamber. Uh, fast melee would make sense. Nice call. Nice call. Nate. Nice. Boys. I love fast melee builds in Z. Yeah, so we might very well see uh, links, and fast melee is awesome because it kind of it does very well against roaches up until the roaches have their own plus one where they can one shot uh, circlings. And again, this is the type of map with cer where circlings ca can pay off. It's also the type of map where maybe you cut, uh, could cut a bailing nest. So um, yeah. obviously always, they didn't. But. I always felt like a lot of, all the discussions always go around the fast carapace for surviving bane hits. And to me, it seems, uh, and I don't play Zerg, but to me, it seems like the fast melee is, it's, it can be very good and very useful, but it is very greedy because it doesn't help at the start, right? Like if you get hit with something, like if it kicks in in a Ling versus Ling fight, if there's Banelings involved, it's still going to be more so about the Banelings. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two arguments to be made on that front, right? Like the, the melee is not just better against Roaches, it, it is also 50 gas cheaper. And gas is tied. Ah, yeah. So so it kicks in considerably faster, whereas if you go for the for the carapace, there's a, a bigger gap where you have an investment that's basically dead. Thank you for blowing my mind. I'm ready I'm ready for the test after it's, it's pretty great this uh, this opener. I really like it. I would like to see maybe a muta transition or something out of it. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like I'm watching Scarlet play Z V Z. Yeah. Yeah, I like I well uh, yeah I'm, I'm I'm pretty out there with this type of build, but I actually like on very large maps like this one. If I'm gonna do the plus one melee, I like to start my Evo chamber at 30 gas, and then you can get the melee. Then when you have 100 gas, you make the speed, and they actually sync up. Damn. Sick. Not gonna be the case here, but uh, but still, it's a very very early plus one melee. I like learning. It's okay. Give me all your hypotheses. And look at this. Raynor is going for the Hydra. And so we might we might actually end up seeing the Ling into into Lurker that we talked about earlier. I'm this so if there's gonna be a map, it's yeah, it's this one. And Roaches didn't work out for him. Now that's a lot of fame in committal, so the links are really gonna struggle to make anything happen here. So we just take the fourth immediately then and try to contain him or uh, something for sure. I mean I think you kind of just chill. Like, main links are pretty expensive on the gas, so um, at the very least, Raynor has to know that Serral's going to be delayed. Serral is too good at scouting, but yes, we are indeed going to see the Ling Lurker from Raynor. That so, wow, that's here from cool. Serral. Scouts all, sees the Lurker den. That's got to be a little bit um, scary, right? You don't mm -hmm. have your own Hydra den. He's only now starting it with the uh, Infestation Pit, but Lurkers are going to potentially be in his face pretty soon, considering the contain he has with the Lings. Like, he might be able to cover them to actually get in position. Yeah, and Serral's actually choosing, uh, choosing to chase right behind him. He's not saying, oh, this, oh, I see you. I'm going to make a bunch of roaches and kill you. He's saying, oh, OK, I, I see you. I'm just going to keep my, my potential macro advantage, even, even though they're pretty much even. In terms of uh, workers, he was faster to make those workers while uh, while Rainer teched up, and he's just gonna chase behind him. He's gonna make uh, he's gonna make his he's gonna go for his own tech. There's the there's his there's his own lurker then. So we're looking at a later CVZ potentially, and I kind of like this for Rainer because he didn't waste quote unquote <laughs> money on uh, on roaches. Yeah, you, this game just reminds me that the Hydralis den actually builds very quickly, and the mm. lurker den takes forever. <laughs> this is very true. Uh, love the baning drops as well. This is the kind of thing that, you know, if you have the extractions to spare, it's just fantastic to drop all over the place. Serral certainly does. And uh, some Ravagers. This is for safety, just so that if Lurkers show up before he's ready, he can actually bile them in small numbers. It's pretty effective. Yeah, now they're, they're all just chilling. Chilling and teching up. The Lurkers are coming in, and ooh, ooh la la. I mean... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, if you got the Hydras with the Overlord drop, that would have been nice. But great denial there by Rainer. Very, very good. I mean, those are not cheap. That's 75 minerals per Baneling, total of 300 plus 400 plus the Morph, what, another 50, 450 bucks. Gone just like that. And those Hydras are going to heal over time. Their wounds are not permanent cats. Yeah, they will. They will indeed heal. They're, they're like the Wolverine. There is a <laughs> hive coming up for uh, Raynor, and again, Raynor is ahead on most regards. Just uh, just because he was he was first to the tech, 
And Serral said, okay, I can't kill you. Never mind, I'm just gonna tech behind you, right? So um, so Serral basically forfeiting his uh, his potential advantage or kill potential in favor of uh, in favor of just playing from behind. So he's gonna be the defender. And with this, and Raynor knowing this, he's also gonna expand. Both players kind of mirroring each other, but Raynor's gonna be first to every punch. He's got a chunk of the lings of that northeast tower too. Send up a lone bane ling. And then the lings are gonna come down and poke the hatch again, but there is no no purchase to be found here. Uh, actually, it's Serral with a faster uh, lurker tunneling tunneling claws and upgrades. I'm not sure how he does that, but yeah, he's managed to tech faster. So, oh, Raynor does have the greater numbers here and and does have the map control. So if he is able to establish position, he will not. He will not. You shall not pass. No. Lurkers are a very, very clear line in the sand, no fly zone type of unit. Mm -hmm. The repositioning is going to be really important, though. As you mentioned, the adaptive talons upgrade is done. That's one that lets them burrow super quick. Yeah, so, so Raynor is going to be hard pressed to find any position here, but he actually does find a decent position with a couple of these lurkers, and Hydra's outrange uh, roaches and ravagers, so he can siege this hatchery from the side. He has to siege it. Those guys that are attacking the gas, they have to start hitting that hatchery, and I would love to see some of the lurkers reposition to that side, uh, but he's not at the moment. Tries to go for a run by. Um, the next step is going to be Vipers here. Hydra's is already the, the chosen transition um, with this unit composition. I, oh, wow. Stepping forward really hard. I mean, the repositioning uh, ability of the Lurkers Ooh. still really nice. Starting to push back a little bit. Get him off the hatch, at least. Yeah, a little bit sloppy here and there by Raynor. Watching two Lurkers shoot each other. Is <laughs> it is. Still shooting the hatchery while protecting and, and shielding with those Hydralisks. Uh, Raynor has a few roaches, and right now roaches are strong, but as the game progresses, they're going to be pretty useless. No vipers in production for either player right now. It's all about this uh, this real state. If Raynor is able to deny this, he will be one base up ahead. He will. Does it? I mean, he's not even mining off of it, though, too, right? So this whole time, while he was holding on to it, he wasn't able to actually mine it, but it's been mining on the other side for Rainer, and he's actually going to go for a counterattack now while he tries to deal with this huge assault from his opponent. Oh, beautiful blinding cloud as well from Rainer. That's going to allow his lurkers to move on forward. Serral's plus three is about to finish. Oh, wow, nice. Serral finding the space to do this. I mean, a lurker would have shut down, would have shut this down. And as I say that, the overseer just shows up for good measure. So Raynor gonna be looking to reposition, but the game has reset one more time. I mean, Raynor with us with a small army army advantage, but this is all gonna come down to pickoffs, and this is why you go for the Hydras at this stage in the game. Uh, even though both players kind of skipped over the Roach phase, uh, you want the Hydras because they have the higher DPS um, and the higher range. And this is not about engaging head on as the game progresses. It's about pulling units to your army. So any unit you pull will just be instantly deleted by the Hydras, and they're more of, a, of an all-purpose unit. Yep. Uh, higher damage output as well. Those Vipers, uh, we've seen they've been so crucial for endgame ZVZ. Mm. Yeah, they're the only way to break the Lurkers short of something like Ultras and Mass Queens. It is clear this contest cannot be determined <laughs> by our Lurker Micro, <laughs> instead by our Viper Control. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. So, uh... Yeah, I mean this is this is pretty much as uh, as as clear cut as clear cut as it gets for the CVZ late game, and it is a difficult dance, but uh, but it's gonna be a, a beautiful one be between these two as they are masters of, of their craft. What are the viper numbers looking like here? Uh, three on the side. What what died? Okay, no, we're good. One. Oh, uh, no. Just three Vipers on the side of Raynor to four on the side of... So that's a huge pickoff onto one of the Vipers, so only two left over on the side of Raynor. That Overseer is a little bit jibby. Yeah. The Lurkers are not with this, uh, this force. Oh, nice. So Raynor continuing to deny bases here. I would love for him to open the path, maybe by clearing those uh, minerals. L I would love to see some uh, some Nidus or some sort of you know drops. Yeah, I, I concur completely. It's a huge map, so it's pretty easy to to try and get those. And you know, like the army can only be at, at one place at a time. Yes, there can be squads like these, but 
the players will be securing their bases, I imagine, with with static defense as well as uh, as a lurker here here and there. Okay, just I mean, really, just wait for the posturing, right? It's about so much bad. Good, Ooh. good opportunity. The lings get through. That one drone almost had a chance to block, but Queen is gonna die. Oh my God! Look at that, eating those lurkers straight into the third base. Okay, that's a bold move. That's oh, wow. a very bold move. Yeah, and look at Serral, very diligent too in clearing this with small numbers of units. So, but Rainer at the same time will push on forward. Good. And I was saying, Ray, and I was saying, Serral so good for doing this because he doesn't use his entire army, but still he's caught off position by Rainer, who is quick to pounce onto the next base. At the same time, Serral is no slouch, as uh, everyone well knows, and he will actually get a very nice pickoff. Onto the Lurker, then a potential, potentially other tech, forcing Raynor to reposition some of these Lurkers. And uh, and he's going to have to start all over on that on that regard, yeah, as for, the Pegler um, then also gets, yeah. gets taken. Yeah. So these Roaches are going to bait him over that way, and then the other Roaches in the main are going to do nothing. Never mind. Not for now. Nor the now, anyway. Good control by Rainer. Oh, yeah, oh, as I say that, the Hydra's pulled back enough and grabs five Lurkers. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, and no. the rest of them. Make it eight. Ah, that's huge. And if we look at the at the resources lost, it's uh, it's Serral that has been considerably more efficient. So for all the advantages that Cer that uh, Rainer was taking in terms of uh, in, in terms of strategy, if you will, right? Like he he chose a really cool strategy. He kind of took some risks, and they paid off. But Searle has closed the gap. Raynor does still have a little bit of a margin of error by virtue of having a few more drones than his opponent, though. And these Hydras are going to make mincemeat of this expansion. And he can take the fight if he wants, but it doesn't Good. matter. He's gonna, he should be able to get it. Any, just, just tap it oh. in! Yeah, he has to. Just yeah, he would. give it a little tap If he doesn't, take away his trophy. Is he, did he leave it up to try and like make it um, less of a not sure. This was one of the worst plays I've ever seen from Serral ever. Like, any one Hydra could have taken See, that hatchery, maybe, you know? Like, maybe he's a fan of future. Maybe he's a fan, yeah, that was a tribute. <laughs> that was an This is not, Star this is not the worst tribute. play ever made. This is merely a tribute. <laughs> no, the Vipers! Ah! Yeah, well, that that was that was forgiveness, absolute. I mean, I'm sure he'll go back and try to kill it, but now Raynor has the has the the potential to heal that hatchery, maybe transfuse it, and that is actually pretty huge. The bank greatly favoring the Italian stallion. Goodbye, hatchery. Yeah, in terms of army positioning, it's been it's been Raynor all game, and he has had map control for a very long time, very active with his army movement, very low on the lurker count, but not by choice. And uh, Cyril. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's Cyril that has the Viper count and the Lurker count, so it's. Yeah. Rainer was behind on the one ranged upgrade as well. Excuse me, the, the Carapace upgrade on the ground. Mm -hmm. So that's also a factor, but Rainer started three Nidus Networks cats. Oh, I love it. I mean, that's. that's oh what boy! <laughs> vipers I love pulling vipers. vipers. Yeah, it's one of the. That's one of the most awful things to watch. Oh, there we go. Yes! There we go. Touchdown. This with the one single Lurker. No! Citizens arrest. Broodlings with no upgrades. Actually, that's not true. Rainer's broodlings have plus two. Yes, indeed. Yeah, the armor the armor upgrade is not irrelevant, but it's also the least important upgrade, right? Because because of the nature of, of how these compositions play uh, play out, it's not usually straight out, straight on engagements. Yeah. With a lot of AOE involved as well with all those lurkers, right? So, makes sense. Yes, indeed. And we have the Overlord going into Serral's main, and there's going to be the Nidus. Triple the first Nidus. three Nidus. Wow. How are you going to kill three? Yeah, you cannot. Once. Uh, but the entire army of Serral's being pulled back. Now, if Raynor was in position to actually push onto the fourth of Serral right I now, he's that actually, would be brilliant. No, he's, he's going all in. He's, okay. It wasn't quite everything. Uh, uh, yeah, that's actually not a lot from Serral, considering the three Nidus's. I thought he should have pulled a little bit more, because if Raynor gets a hold of the ramp of Serral, the entire uh, main of Serral and all the tech with it will have to be forfeit. Yep, he's getting himself into quite a large fight. He's actually caught almost all of Raynor's lurkers over here. Oh, man. And he's going to be able to section off a huge chunk of that army, but still, he's got a lot to deal with inside of his base. I think maybe it's time to send everything home and try to clear this out. Yeah. It's, oh, but it's Raynor that's going to retreat. I'm not sure I like that. I think he still had the stronger position with the Lurkers there. 
Uh, and I'm not sure he accomplished much in terms of attacking. He took nothing from those three Niduses. Oh, he's gonna try and just get to this base next, which I yeah. makes some sense. Yeah, and I mean, these aren't so so expensive, but the initial Niduses, like all three of them, they are. Yeah, I mean, Serral definitely had an insanely good fight, that last one. Oh. Rainer has made it through all of his gas bank, too, so... Yeah, it's not looking very good for him. He's very low on on, uh, on Vipers as well, and army in general. Um, but actually, it's Raynor's army that's considerably more expensive than Serral. I'm not sure where or why that is. Ah, uh, Raynor's economy is now being destroyed. As is Serral's, though. Both of these really trading blows all over the place. This Lurkers, there's no there's no detection for Serral. He'll have to... Oh, good, good, oh there is detection for Serral. He has it, but he was, yeah, he was focusing the hash down. Hmm. Oh, this could be a good position for Raynor, but with only two or three Lurkers, they can easily be picked off by this many Vipers. Yeah. He's got the Vipers coming in, too, now. Yeah. So his Hydras are going to engage. The attention. Duck, grabs the Overseers. I mean, denying detection is one thing you can do, yeah. but Overseers oh, are not nice. the most expensive, so... This is very one. nice, and now he's got a hold of that ramp. It's going to be very difficult for Serral to break back into his own main base. Those Hydras should really go to, to work on the Lurker, then on the Hydra then and on the infestation pit. The lair is, uh, the hive is obviously a great, uh, a great target as well. And uh, Serral being as diligent as he is, has already remade the most important stru structure, which is gonna be the, the core unit, the Hydra here. Don't reposition your lurkers, just like make sure you can't get blind and clouded and go kill those buildings, right? Like those buildings are so important in the back and they, they can't be remade anymore. Nope. No, you're, you're totally right, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, why do you why do you hold the the tr the ramp if you're not gonna kill the buildings, right? Like, sure, you you took the hive, but the other buildings are just as important. And he's gonna retreat. Oh, that's a little frustrating. Leaving the infestation pit, the hydra den, and the lurker den. Cyril even he's gonna rebuild the lurker den anyway, just because he's like, I guess he's not <laughs> that position as much anymore. Maybe it's for practice. He's like, okay, you should have taken it. So let's imagine that you did. Ha! Huh. It's like, well, if I yoink all your units over, you can't jump into the Noidus. Noidus. Rainer is back once again. Maybe he hasn't spotted the buildings. I suppose anything's possible. No, he yeah. spotted them. Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. It's a game of forgiveness here. Maybe his, it's payoff for the hatchery earlier. Let's see. These armies. Oh, something just went real. The Vipers just got real close. This is about to get real. Just gonna yoink some more lurkers. Yeah, the resources lost tab is actually rather close right now. Just a 3,000 difference or so. When we're talking like over 60,000 resources lost in total. Similar mining, but it is it is Cyril that's about to deny the mining from Raynor at the top potentially. Is Raynor set up there? That's that's the real the, the real question. This is for the economy, and he is not. So this is fantastic from Cyril. That's that's the blood supply for Rainer as far as economy is concerned. Oh, but he manages not to take it yet again, and that's gonna be costly. Quick reaction from Rainer. It's gonna Cyril's gonna be using this to reposition his army. Those lurkers are gonna be the ultimate barrier for Rainer. Let's look at this fight. All those minerals, he could. Oh yeah, this is a really good spot to siege up. Yeah, it's very very good. If he doesn't get a blinding class, oh man, in the middle. Oh, Rainer still has a lot, but is this enough? Beautiful blinding clouds from Serral. So many lurkers. Yeah, and the blinding clouds, I mean, with enough of a concave. Oh, but the blinding clouds in return from Rainer might allow him to push on forward still. This is a very close fight, and it is Rainer breaking through, doing what seemed impossible for a second there, and this game is as close as it gets, Nate. Look at the supply. Even though, uh, even though every, you know, every, everything that's transpired here, so many trades, non-stop trades. The backup Hydra Den and Lurker Den. Yeah, but I mean, there's two of there's two of each. And so, gotta take the main one first. I think the main ones are gonna be bleeding out soon. Ooh, right? and this is. Oh, please, please. He's trapped. Oh! One hit. What is with these games? This is crazy. Like, just suicide a Hydra. Oh my god. Well, he send tried. A, he send tried. A drone, you know, he like tried to yeet a roach over there. And he failed. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty yeet, if you ask me. Okay, send everything to the top side. There we go. Finally killing off the tank that he's not using anymore. 
Yeah. I guess, did Sarah ever go back up to a hive again? I don't think so, no. no. He never even rebuilt a lair, so. Yeah. He's got, he's, his viper retention has been fantastic in that case also. Oh, yes, indeed. Until literally right now. Oh, oh no. It was a one of the most beautiful CBCs I've watched with some of the single weirdest yeah. oversights, right? Like two hatcheries living with no close to no HP. Difficult to forgive. I mean, you have the army right there, just click it, you know? And then there's a, the free tech in the main. You have control of of that area. I mean, a few oversights. Weird game, to say the uh, least. Yeah. yeah. That's all. That's I, I got nothing to add to that. That was a weird match. But, I mean, if you think about it, <coughs> Rainer just kind of returned the favor from Cyril not killing his hatchery. Yeah. So, Same thing. Some way or another, Paolo, the universe restores itself to balance. I think that's exactly what we just witnessed. Yeah. That is serendipity in the weirdest way. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. Nothing better than a, seeing a conflict achieve a resolution. Uh, I mean, got, all in all, that was a beautiful display. That, that was, was a great game. Wonderful game. That yeah. was a great game in StarCraft II, Legacy of the Void. It sure was. And New Repugnancy is going to be the next map. Now, we can't ignore the fact that Serral is up 3-0 right now. Mm. And we also can't ignore that we've had some, some sort of countery sweepy games today as well. So Raynor is either going to follow through on the trends we've had, and uh, he's going to all of a sudden just... You know, whatever. I don't really know any wrestling moves, but he's, he's going to use one of those. Suplex. He's going to suplex him. He's going to pull a reversal on him. Or something DDT, like that. A reversal, really? I don't That's know. That's the best you can. He's going to go for like a finishing blow. And he's going to parry. <laughs> he's going to parry it, right? That gives kick, you a, a free super frame kick. of attack. Super kicks are pretty good. Super kicks. Yeah, those are to the face. Okay, I've played more now. Those hurt. Yeah. New repugnancy. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> His map's pretty vanilla for ZBZ, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're probably going to see roaches here. It's, you know, like it has Pink. to be a large, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> I just predicted the, the lurker uh, link, so. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just testing you. Yeah. Like we just, you just called the, the plus one milli out of, out of nowhere, out of thin air you conjured it. But now, yeah, new repugnancy, I think it's safe to say. Probably yeah, it's some roach. Yeah, it's, it's Make it to the roach. I could see Cyril getting aggro again. Otherwise, I completely agree with you. For some reason, I'm feeling like Cyril's... I'm remembering that it's midnight there now. Mm. And Cyril might be saying, mm, would be pretty nice if I just kill him. Uh, yeah, I think he'll go for an early pull too. All right, let's do it. We have yeah. not been wrong today, almost at all. Will Cyril go for an early pull? Nope, we lost. All right, Jinxed. well, you know what? It's, it's fine. It's cool. It's cool. Cool, 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 is that uh, from Community? Cool, 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 cool. What's that? Community? You didn't watch Community? I don't even know what that is. What? A TV show? Yeah. With oh, a stole it. childish Gambino. As a... Who's that? Yo, as a memer. Are you kidding? As a memer, I think, uh, uh, you know, all... The thing about a meme is that it, it, ex it, it is what it is because it is a social thing, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's not meant to be someone's original thing. So I can very comfortably say that I stole that meme, or propagated it. Probably propagated it from Nine Nine. Oh, I love Bro Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, yeah. That's my jam. Yeah. I love that show. It's so good. It's very good. It's very, very, very good. Just like these two over here. You haven't noticed the only thing I say whenever we talk about what players would spend prize money on. The only thing I ever say as an answer is yogurt. Yogurt. Greek yogurt, man. It's good stuff. Is that from 99? Almond Coco Loco, baby. <laughs> what? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Nathan loves this yogurt. Uh, yes, indeed. Oh, this is pretty cool by Rainer, by the way. He's saturating the gas kind of slowly. Like, he actually went for two on gas and prioritized minerals. So, uh, the only thing this means is his speed is going to be a little bit later. And he's going to have a little bit more, you know, a slightly faster drone here and You there. can make the most simple, basic, boring things sound interesting, Cats, and I love you for it. Well, it's pretty good. Well, there are, there are implications, right? It's not it's not a void thing. If you, for sure. If you think that your gas is a little bit later than your opponent's, for example, you probably shouldn't be out on the map with links. Because okay. as soon as your opponent gets link speed, he can just punish you and kill you. But if the window is almost irrelevant, then, you know, it kind of doesn't matter. And here it's pretty much irrelevant. 
Okay. I like it. Cyril decided that he only needed two Zerglings this game, Cats. Do you think that's a power move? It's a power move, yeah. Okay. Because he wants more drones, right? He wants to get that money. Yeah. And what Raynor's looking to do is, well, Cyril's just going to spot this and match him, actually. But Raynor's looking to say, okay, I'm going to pressure onto your third and maybe get a cancel if you know if you were making drones, if you ran out of larva, uh, stuff like that. Not going to be the case here. Um, it's going to be Cyril with a faster baneling uh, speed this time around, or the banelings, the baneling nest this time around. It's exclusive. It's going to nibble on that hatchery, and then sixlings are going to show up from Cyril. He's going to say, okay. Could you imagine Ooh. being one person and actually like RC remote control trying to drive all of these things at once? Because that's kind of what the <laughs> idea of the skin set is. Isn't that what Flash did and uh, when he played League once? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I just imagine like you tune into like Robot Wars or something, and it's actually just a bunch of lings, and like you got two people trying to pilot like a hundred ling mechs all at the same time. Oh, this is see. See, that Link died because Raynor started mining his gas a little bit later. Oh my god, it's all coming full circle. Yeah. I'm disgusted. What a misplay. What a misplay. Well, it's just the one thing, right? And uh, there's going to be a little bit of a counterattack. I think Raynor will get a cancel here. Uh, oh, not cancel, rather kill. There are some banings being morphed. I'm not sure if close enough. And he is... No, just click it! Too late. Now these two banelings are going to be dangerous, as Cyril does the same thing. I think Raynor could get the better of this engagement, though, and he kind of has to, because he, he made a lot more links. He's trailing behind on workers by six. But if he gets the hatchery kill, it'll all be worth it. He does need to get it. Clicking on hatcheries. That's the theme of this season of WCS Challenger. From Europe to <laughs> NA. Yeah. Finish killing town halls. Yeah, well, it's it's looking less and less likely, right? Like, the banelings have uh, potential as the army scale. The larger your army, the more scary the baneling is. Ooh, oh, big mistake by Serral! Exploding all of his banelings onto just the two of Raynor. And now Raynor, with superior numbers, is going to be able to push in on two fronts. This might just be it, actually. The third is the very important place as well. As uh, some banelings spawn there, but they are forced to go back to the main. No! Be careful. Ah, okay, that's a pretty sick save from Cyril so far. He does have more banes, but looks like some links up inside of the main base didn't lose too much of them just yet. Bane link coming down back towards that third base as Cyril is holding on for life. He does still have a seven worker lead. Yeah, it's the two bane links and the there are morphing in the main of Cyril that are gonna represent mm. a big pro potential problem. And this bane flank is a nice idea. Match is getting real low, Huge. big fella. Yep. Uh Raynor needs to find another way to divert to make it so that those banelings and the, I, please don't rally them straight into the middle line. I don't like this. There's nothing else going on. Up, up. Middle. Oh! Still hits, but not as well, not as much as if you if those banelings had been rallied in as the hatchery died, they probably get like six, seven drones instead. Um, but they just end up getting the three, I think, or oh, did they get seven? Yeah, it was. It was oh, that's one feather. Seven. Yeah, then Rainer is in. Definitely could have gotten a few more though. You're right. Yeah. Raynor is in a, in a pretty good position right now, for sure, as he has the third ready. That's the equivalent to seven drones, if you look at it from a cost perspective. Um, and he's also five drones ahead, so five to seven, twelve. And there's still Lings in the main. Very nice. Yeah, it's looking like Raynor will, will strike back. He also knows exactly what Cyril's doing. He's dropping his own Roach Warren, adding extra gases. And uh, his only disadvantage... I was going to say upgrade, but Thurl doesn't actually have a uh, an evolution chamber either. Okay, well now I have to just ask, what do? He's just, what is he going to do? Just build roaches now? With he has to. Yeah, advantage? Yeah, he, he has to build roaches. If he holds, I think he wins. Um, but will he hold? I mean, Thurl's a scary beast. I don't want to don't waste those. There are only five roaches in production. I mean, Cyril might still be able to do it with this. Uh, Raynor is well ahead in terms of uh, drones by 12. Roach is now popping up, and th there could be extra banelings had those not died. I mean, Raynor is pretty broke. Those queens don't want to be here either, really. But uh, but Raynor is, is being very cautious not to give up this positioning. 
However, yeah, I mean, Ooh. it doesn't have enough. The queens all get surrounded and killed. And use the roaches and the ravagers mm. to focus down the banes. So now he has oh, lanes of spotter. This. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of a mistake by Raynor to push out with the queens, because he knew how many roaches Errol had, and he should know that this was, you know, his checkmate move just by holding. But it will be Serral taking it with a convincing Vossi rope. Well done, Mr. Serral. Well done. Picking up another championship. What a man. Very what a beast. Nice. What a Zerg player. Yes. What an e-gamer. What a truly momentous day it has been for us to see Cyril once again sitting on top of the pile of skulls of all of the other European StarCraft players. Yes, indeed. It has been a wonderful day for exactly just that. Congratulations. He's done it again. Cyril, your WCS Winter Challenger for WCS Fall Champion. We're going to take another look at the matches that we had today. It has been a long one, ladies and gentlemen, but we somehow survived it all with Cyril defeating Raynor four to nothing after a beautiful display of some Zerg versus Zerg. Um, hell of a day. Uh, you got you got anything that you want to say, Cats, before we sign off? It's been a wonderful experience to cast beside you, to cast uh, with Ravers to the production, a Wisom Sauce, our observer, relentless in the back. So, uh, Can't yeah. Can't be stopped. He's a monster. He really is. That concludes WCS Challenger for Europe. But if you want even worse memes and scrappier <laughs> gameplay, make sure to tune in tomorrow. We'll be doing the finals for WCS Challenger Americas. And that should be great. Fantastic. Lots of Terran play if you're into some more of that. But uh, that does it here from all of us at the Blizzard Arena. Thank you for stopping by.